another episode. We're in, we're rocking and unplugged. Hi Welcome. guys. You go. Go for it. Now you go. <laughs> right, as you can see, we've, uh, well, I've had some time off and, uh, and thrown out of the, the sink, so... Welcome to the Unplug Health Series podcast. Radio thing. Radio thing number whatever. Time's ticking on. I was actually going through and and seeing and, and checking all the um, podcasts going through and time's ticking on. The um, the years tick by. 2019, wasn't it? I think so. Something like Four that. Four years. There we go. Wow. I think it was like January or February. It actually came up on the memories where we'd done one in January 2020. And we had no idea what was coming. <laughs> no, we still have no idea what's going on either. Exactly. It's the so, best way. I've had some time out. Reminder, certainly to the benefit of uh, spending some time, even when you enjoy uh, doing what we do, which I can't speak for I uh, do. myself, but I know Ollie does. Uh, anyone more than, you know, when you enjoy what you do, you run the risk of, of burnout. So it was uh, good to um, good to take breath get out, recharge. But I also, one of my things I thought of, what's it like if you then have a week away and you really enjoy that, but you don't enjoy what you're doing when you really have that, that uh, the Sunday night before going back to school feeling, but it's your work. So you're working sick Monday. every Sunday night. Yeah. I'd go down and I feel sick. Never used to work. What, with work or with school? Both. <laughs> <laughs> and that, that made me think that how, um, how fortunate that, uh, that I am of, of really looking forward to going back to work and, and really actually don't even call it work. But um, I think that's the thing we get caught up in is that it is a good thing, but more of a good thing doesn't even doesn't make it even better necessarily. Yeah. We have to, we can't pour from an empty cup. No, and, and if many things, I've always said, as much as I love work, if you, uh, if it, you know, we all take our last breath at some stage and yeah. if, if my life flashes in front of me, I'm not going to wish that I'd work seven days a week. You know, it's those, yeah. those quiet times of spending time with your loved ones or reflecting and recharging. So it's been great to get, get back to work uh, recharged. There's actually, um, I know it's, we said a different topic, but something that uh, being Christian and looking through things in the Bible, talk about love thy neighbor like thyself. But how many of us actually love ourselves enough to actually give enough love? We, we will love our neighbors and yeah. we want to treat other people. But when we actually look deeper into it, how many of us are actually pouring from an empty cup? Well, and, and comfortable with that idea of self-love, comfortable with the idea of I need to nurture myself and then I can look after others. Yes. And in a caring professions and, and working with clients and, and giving of energy to others, you need to, you need to have that that energy first. So, uh, yeah, very, very important. So, need more holidays, need more time out. That's In the, the last 25 years. That's it. It's Roger's 25 year anniversary of, of being in practice. Yeah. yeah. Time Easy flies when you're having fun. Yeah. I like to think there's another. How many holidays have you had in that time? Not enough. 25? <laughs> At least. Well, probably there's too many mouths to feed as well. We're all, we're all unfortunately subject to still the demands of, of modern day life and and rent and mortgages and cars and schooling and all sorts. But hey, that's not what we were really thinking we, we about We were talking, today. talking about modern life and logic with regard to something came up on my feed and it got me thinking about this stuff where people say eggs are bad, red meat is bad and things like that. And another client asked me, oh, I can't have all these, these eggs. And I'm not having loads of eggs. We were talking about one or two a day. But aren't they bad for you with cholesterol? And actually, I believe I've got a live going out, a, a reel going out next week, which I recorded yesterday. But we look at logic. People are quick to demonize red meat, demonize eggs or good quality butter and dairy and things like that. But they're not quick to demonize, if we should even use the word demonize, the processed junk we have, the, yeah. the, the crisps, the, I don't know, the chocolate bars, the... Oreos, the there's other brands available. Um, the Pringles, I can't uh, even think of many junk foods now. But that we're, we're quick to demonise these single ingredient foods that yeah. actually can be really healthy for you, and also but not uh, logically, and also that we forget and been moved away that these are whole foods that are closer to how our original physiology was designed to to process. Yeah, 
Um, and then seeing actually the, the other thing is, is through the years, seeing how certain processed foods become almost seen as a whole food. They become a food group. They become a, an entity. So, um, so that, yeah, I agree. It's, it's quite interesting of, of how, but, but this are the things come through fads. I was speaking with a client the other day about, um, the concept of cholesterol Mm -hmm. and, and he was brought up and saying, I'm really confused because my, my cholesterol is, is raised. Um, but I, I've got to try and cut out cholesterol in my diet. And I said to him, number one, what was your cholesterol reading? Couldn't remember, just was told that it was raised by phoning the, the medical practice and being told that it was high. So I said, well, number one, it needs to be broken down, as you and I know, but do you understand what cholesterol is and what its role is? So number one, we don't want it crazy high, but it does have a role. Um, and then are we, have you been told or have you looked into how the body produces cholesterol? What's the, physio- the physiological process of cholesterol? Because it's not as simple as I eat cholesterol, then I, then I get cholesterol. That's, that comes from the very old, you know, the 70s and 80s particularly was you eat fat, you'll get fat. Um, you know, you, you are what you eat. And, yeah. and the, the physiology of how the body produces cholesterol and processes fats and processes uh, meats and process how it digested is not as clear cut and and classically what happened as you come out of these things he, he he came out more confused than he was because the the information that he had as a baseline from what he had been fed and understood through his life and then being given through you know general society was did not hold up because suddenly Very he much. realized Actually, everything that I've been told, like eggs have cholesterol, so eating eggs is bad. It's very old science. But old belief systems are still being held on to. Yeah. So you are getting that demonized element of red meat is bad or that or, or, or bits and pieces. And you, and you kind of think, well, we're still holding on to old dogma, but we're not still in using modern. Like when we look at the actual system of Western medicine, it takes a long while to change it. I was talking to on a podcast with a couple of MDs last week. So hopefully it'll come out next week or the week after um, the gut, gut check project, I think it's called. Um, we were talking about the systems of healthcare in America and systems in, in UK. And we were talking about that, how on a cholesterol test, you'll have your HDL, then you'll have LDL and then you'll have non HDL, but they haven't got VLDL all the time. And there's now like uh, the, when we look at other markers that APOB, like apoprotein yeah. B and E as well, which are markers of how likely we are to have problems with cholesterol. And then we add in triglycerides into the mix. How many doctors are actually going through this whole actual report to see, and they're just saying total cholesterol. And as we've said yeah. before many times on, I believe on this podcast, is that even just looking at HDL and LDL, HDL being good, LDL being bad, technically, uh, it's like knowing there's six goals in a football game. Is it three three or is it six nil? We need yeah. to know the levels. And, and also it. that the frustrating is that they they are they either certainly within the UK the NHS system they are unable to access or make use of from a guidelines or costing effect for each practice whatever make use of of all the possibilities of how to assess that better. Yeah. They, so you also look at it with thyroid, you know, with the, they'll tend to do, you know, a thyroid level so TSE, and a TSH, 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 TSH and that's it. And that's the marker which we will judge of how your Same thyroid, with testosterone, with total testosterone, yeah. not free testosterone. So there's a lot more evaluation than there's a lot more science, but there's still old dogma. And as, as you quite rightly say, then there are then the war is declared on certain food groups, certain concepts, but we're not using that same um, process. They're then also looking at all food stuffs. Yeah. So at- the highly processed foods and that have become so ingrained in our modern day lifestyle that um, it's almost becomes that uh, you're not going to look at those things because they, they're not, a, not, not in the same category as something like meat. You'll have There's also the cholesterol made, wouldn't you, from the raw materials that make cholesterol. Dietary cholesterol pretty much always just gets processed and 
sent out again. Like we don't actually uptake much of that. So what even eating good cholesterol doesn't necessarily change the actual cholesterol levels. It's the lifestyle choices, right? Unless you, you're eating processed foods. Yeah, yeah. Those are junk food, smoking, drinking, sedentary lifestyle, but, high stress. But you and I also know that within that kind of lifestyle, if there's a higher use of the crappy carbs, it's also the crappy carbs can drive the cholesterol levels up. Yeah. But most people junk aren't food. associating cholesterol with carbohydrates. They associate cholesterol with fats. Yep. So I'm now on a low fat diet. And so what they've done is they're like declared war on fats. So I said, okay, so some of the fats, yes, we all probably would want to be more associated. So especially those ones in the processed foods. Trans fats. Trans fats. Yeah. And your, um, and your margarines and your, your, and all your mass produced cooking because they're cheaper. Oh, they can't believe it's not and butter they, or anything. Yeah, and they're like, oh. Seed oils, yeah. And I said, but you don't want to become a low fat diet in that you're not getting your healthy fats. And they're like, oh, but just fats are bad. Let's explain like low fat diet then usually means higher carbs, which means usually for a lot of people, poor blood glucose management, which is going to then lead to more cortisol issues potentially. Lead to fatty liver disease. To, yeah, fatty liver disease, which then we can't get even worse. Insulin resistance, diabetes. Yeah. And then as a result, high cholesterol as well yeah Bad and because it's a stress factor and the body produces cholesterol in stress environment yeah. in anticipation to be bitten by a saber-toothed tiger so it's 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 more complex and to you and i it seems simpler because you've done you've done the reading but it's not as straightforward as you are what you eat so it's a, it is a very uh, very interesting one is that as you say there's almost a blind eye to to looking at other foods because a lot of people are then looking at the, my big one is the breakfast bars. Yeah. You know, the breakfast bars are seen as a healthy weight loss strategy because they then on a piece of paper have been added with vitamins and minerals and they tick every box. But you look at it and go, how's the body designed to process this? This is far removed from every main normal physiological process your body does things. And then when you look at things from an inflammation and a stress level, rather than just take a vitamin C, vitamin B, you go, does this, is this going to put stress on the system or is this, going to, is this supporting the system? And a lot of the modern processed, highly processed foods are putting stress and inflammation but on the system. look about how we should digest, should eat foods. Sit down, take some time, breathe, eat your food, chew your food. Breakfast bars are designed for on the go. Yeah, which yeah. is a stressful lifestyle, which further disrupts which this means digestion. You, you don't have to worry. You can keep, you know, have your coffee and your breakfast bar onto that stressful meeting because you get the all, caffeine from the be, stress. Yeah, and and because you get in all your vitamins and minerals, it yeah. goes back to the we break it down to the parts. As long as you got the parts, all good. But it's like you're just still running that stress stress environment. You go yeah. a little bit on. So when we went away on holiday to to Mallorca you also become a little bit more exposed to different cultures. And there is still a lot of that, but there's also, especially on holiday, you sit to have a meal, there's fresh food, there's fresh stuff, and you're going, food, the meal can take as long or short as you want. You generally you've got no rush. stressed as well. Yeah. And so there isn't that, there is a lot more to it than just as long as I tick all the boxes and get the right vitamins and minerals, then that, that it's you know as long as I put the fuel in the car, the car will run all right. So like what, how you drive the car also makes a difference of how the how it all works. So yeah, it's an interesting, interesting one, one, and it's a big minefield of that people get wrong, but not because they aren't trying. I think it's just because they're not given the right information from the sources that should give the. So right what's a simple strategy that we can leave people with when they're looking at at that element of just as a basic starting point, do you think, as of either nutrition or lifestyle? I think that if it's um, grown or flown, they're, they're things we, we can go or ran on the earth. They're, yeah. they're things like, so basically, things that have come from the earth in their nearest to natural form. It's not to say all processed foods are going to be bad, but if you have an ingredient list of, 20 different ingredients and it's not necessarily going to be yeah. a good thing if there's two or three maybe go if, for it if the food label looks like a scientific experiment yeah like when we look at processed food, like 
but the food the food label for um food label for an apple yeah is if we look at the chemicals and stuff of an apple like it'd be different but like if we look at ingredients raw ingredients so so our our main one is the closer to its natural source possible yeah so you know an apple is an apple but then if it's been if it's an apple juice then it's already gone through a process that's maybe only one stage but if it's down the line become a small part in the end of a long list of ingredients it's probably not going to benefit you nutritionally like an apple does yeah and we, we can do something on smoothies in one of the future ones we'll yeah. write that down as to talk about smoothies i'm sure we've done something before well a good right. one also when we've done talks out is also just food labels yeah taking different food labels and looking at them and, and we can quite easily do a podcast and then choose some food labels discuss them and then in that podcast put those labels up because it's quite interesting when when speaking with people of do you look at the food labels and food choices one when we were in college and we had a our nutritional one of our nutritional lecturers chose told us to go to the supermarket and buy um four products of chicken soup so we're like why four products of chicken soup it's chicken soup it's just go and do it and so everyone bought different four, four products back and then looked at the labels and you think chicken soup is chicken soup but when you look at the labels, they were all they were all processed and and um, and delivering a different product. But in our mind's eye, they were chicken soup. And when you're sick, traditionally old wife tells, "Well, you're sick, you have chicken soup." Yep. Totally different product. So um, yeah, that's a good idea. But if there's any ideas that you guys want or along that, or you sitting there going, "Yeah, but but um, you know, I thought eggs were bad or, or so, then drop us a line and drop we can questions. we can expand and, and you know, speak more on one, so- one topic. I have changed my Instagram now, though. So it's not Ollie J. Matthews, it's Ollie Matthews Health Coach. So that is me. It's not a fake account. So if anyone's following me on Ollie J. Matthews or was OJ Health, it's Ollie Matthews Health Coach now. Um, when will this go out? Uh, a, a week or two? Where are we now? Probably next week, yeah. Yeah, so... Um, We've got the launch party, my launch party for the brand, which I was going to mention Roger's that, uh, kindly sponsoring as well, that we're doing a brand launch party for Ollie Matthews Health Coach, where we're focusing more on Norfolk and helping people just, as we know, improve their health. But it's going to be at the rooftop gardens and the tickets are £10 each. It's a welcome drink and a small donation to Soul Church as well for funding their new building. There's going to be a raffle. There'll be, um, I'll be getting interviewed about health and good networking opportunity. So if you do want tickets for them, ollymatthewshealthcoach.com forward slash launch party. It would be amazing to see some of your patients yeah. here. And, uh, and, meet, and it'd be interesting to and, use and that as a, an opportunity to you know, understand a little bit more of the direction Ollie's going and the focus he's putting into it. So it's really exciting brand. And um, it'd be, we're happy to be uh, you know, playing a small part to support him with that. So I appreciate that. Yeah, other than that, we'll catch you soon and um, have a good end of last summer. What's left in the last UK? Last of the summer wine. All, the, uh, all my friends and family in the Southern Hemisphere are starting to go, oh, it's nice to feel the heat of the sun going. So I'm not speaking to them at the moment because uh, it's been a bit more autumnal here. But I like this one. I've got my jogging bottoms on. We're looking so for a final push work, of a where? bit of summer. Right, right, until then, we'll catch you soon. Take care, guys. See you then. Bye.